Hi folks, Harry Frank from Red Giant here, and in this tutorial, I'm going to be using Trapcode Particular to create differing styles of lines, arrowheads, and dashed lines within Adobe After Effects. The concepts I'll be covering in this tutorial can be used to create a wide array of cool arrow and line styles. We won't cover all of these in detail, but the project file download for this tutorial includes all of these examples for you to explore. This is the final design that we'll be making, and there's some really cool concepts in here that I'm excited to show you. So let's get started in a blank composition over here. I've got a simple gray background, particular applied to a solid with the default settings and a camera just to save us some time. Now to draw these lines in particular, we're going to be using something called a light emitter. So the first thing we need to do is create a light. Now there are applications for the other types of lights, but for what we're doing right now, which is basically drawing a line, we're going to be using a point emitter. Now, before we start changing things in particular, let's create a simple motion path for this light. So I'll hit P, create a position keyframe there and move forward a few seconds and move this over in the X axis. And then I'll grab these handles and just make a slightly curved path here. And just for good measure, let's hit F9 to ease those in and out. Okay, back into particular. Let's go to our emitter section and change that emitter type from a point to a light. What this will do is use any light that starts with the word emitter, which is up here in the options. Any light that starts with this word right here will become an emitter for particles in Trapcode particular. Now, it's not really drawing a line just yet because we have a lot of settings we need to zero out. We need to zero out the velocity. This is the velocity in pixels per second that the particles are moving when they're born. We need to zero out the velocity for motion. This is how much uh, velocity or movement is inherited by the particles from the movement of the emitter. We also need to zero out the emitter size X, Y, and Z. This is the area around the emitter in which particles can be born. We really just want a single point, so we'll set those all to zero. So we're starting to get somewhat of a line here. We need to add more particles per second to smooth this line out. So I'll set this to 300. Next, let's focus on the look of the particle itself. Let's go to the particle section and turn up the particle size. I'll set this to, let's say, 25. Now, if we zoom in, we can see that the edge of this is actually a little bit feathered. This is because the default particle type, which is the sphere, has a feathering of 50. I'd like this to be a nice, sharp, clean line. So I'm going to set the sphere feather to 0. Now, to define the color of these particles, I'll go over here to the set color and change this from an at birth setting, which allows us to set one color at the time it's born, and change this to inherit the color from the light emitter. This allows us to hand off the color from that light and send it directly to the particles. Now, this isn't as useful right now as it will be in a few minutes when we start to add multiple light emitters. But one cool thing that we can do once we add this arrowhead is match the color of the arrowhead to the particles. We have one solid color. So let's do that. So I have got an arrowhead here in my comp. This is just a solid with uh, a mask drawn on it. So what I'll do is take this composition, which is 3D, and parent it to the emitter. Obviously, it's a bit big, so let's scale that down. We'll say 25%. Now, one thing to make sure to check, if you hit AA on this layer, that's 3D, you might want to turn off accepts lights. So by default, this is on. If you turn it over to the left, it'll turn off. This is because we have a light in our scene and it's not in a very good place to be evenly lit by that light that is very, very close to it. So turn this on, basically it goes black. Now I said we're gonna match the color. So to do this, we're gonna use a fill effect, which I already have on here. This is under effects generate fill. And what we'll do is set a simple expression for this fill color. And we'll use the pick whip to connect this to the color of the light. So down here, hit AA to show our light options. And we'll use the pick whip to go down here and link the color of the fill on the arrowhead to the light emitter. There we go. So now we have one fairly solid color. Now, as you can see, although the arrowhead is moving with it, it only points in one direction here. Now, you might be familiar with a function in After Effects that allows us to orient things along a path. But there's a slight trick to doing this in this case. 
we have this parented to another layer, and this presents a slight problem for us. The options that I'm talking about, if you're not familiar with them, are under Layer Transform Auto Orient. And we have a few different options in here, but what we're interested in right now is Orient Along Path. Now, in our case right here, this isn't going to do anything for us because Orient Along Path isn't necessarily named the right way. What it really should say is Orient Along Motion because what Orient Along Path does is look at the velocity. And the velocity is a measurement in both a positive and negative direction of the magnitude in which something is traveling in X, Y, and Z. So there's three different values, how fast it's moving in X, how fast it's moving in Y, and how fast it is moving in Z. We can look at the relationships of those magnitudes in X, Y, and Z and derive the angle that it should be pointing based on how fast it's moving at any given point in time. In fact, we can do this mathematically with expressions. After Effects just provides an easy way to do it. Unfortunately, we are parenting this layer. So effectively to After Effects, this thing technically is not moving. The arrowhead is simply parented, but the position never changes. Because this position never actually changes, we can't get the velocity of this layer. So what do we do? So we're not gonna auto-orient the layer itself, but we're gonna to go to the emitter to which it's parented. The emitter is moving. And I can go to that same set of options. And I'll use the quick key this time, which is Option, Command O, or Control Alt O in Windows. And we have the same option here to orient along the path. Now, if you're paying attention, you might think, well, this is a point emitter. And inside the transform options, there isn't even any sort of rotation control. So how is this supposed to orient itself along a path if it doesn't even have any rotation? That's why I think it's a really good idea to understand orient along path. It is less about setting an actual rotation value and more about orienting along the path that it figures out from the magnitudes of the X, Y, and Z velocities. Easy enough. So now that this emitter is basically orienting itself along in the right direction, our arrowhead should be pretty much pointing in the right direction, although we need to sort of set an initial angle of it. So I'll go to the arrowhead, hit R to show my rotation, and don't feel bad if it takes a few tries to figure out the exact axis that you need to adjust. I never actually get it right on the first try. So now we've got a nice clean looking arrow using trap code particular. We've got an arrow attached to the emitter, and if I change the color of the emitter, the color of everything is going to change with it. Let me show you one other thing that we can do here. I'm going to create a set of dashed lines with this. So I'll duplicate this layer and I'll rename it particular dashed lines. We're going to set a few keyframes, not a lot. We don't want to keyframe all of the dashes on this. But what we can do is set just a few keyframes at the beginning and loop those keyframes over and over. So I'll set a few keyframes here. I'll set the particles per second to zero. I'm going to move forward just 10 frames and we'll set this to 300 and then 10 frames again. Uh, I'm hitting shift command right arrow to jump forward 10 frames and back to zero. Now let's look at these keyframes. I'll select this layer, hit U, tilde to pop this full screen. And I want to select all of these and say toggle hold keyframe. So it's going to hold this value from the beginning, 0 to 300, and then back to 0. I can set an expression in here to loop these keyframes over and over and over for the duration of the composition. So let's do that. I'll go in here, option click on the particles per second, type loop out with the capital O, and in parentheses, I'll type the word cycle in quotes and then a comma, and then after that, we need a duration value. I'll just set that to zero. So let's play this forward. Now, we have a pretty large particle size, so let's go into our particle section, turn down this size, let's say, to three. So now we have dashes happening about every, well, every 10 frames. So let's go down here, select all of these. I'll zoom in a little bit. And what I can do with all of these selected is hold down the Option key and squeeze them together. Let's move forward just a little bit. So as I squeeze these together, the dashes are going to get closer and closer together. Now, one thing that we can do with this is to create a different spacing between the dashes and the spaces in between the dashes. So what we have are a length and time between the first and second keyframe where this is off, and then the second and third keyframe where it's on. So if I move this closer to that one, 
we'll have a wider space and a shorter dash. And if I take this back the other way, we'll have a longer dash and a shorter space, which I think is pretty cool. Those are the basic concepts of what we're going to be doing. Drawing lines, creating dashes, attaching arrowheads, and orienting them. So on this uh, dashed line here, I'm going to go back to my particle color and set this to at birth and just have it use that white color. Okay, so we've laid the groundwork. Now let's move forward and create some really cool stuff. And this is the stuff that I'm really excited to show you. I mean, this stuff is cool too, but I'm pretty geeked about the, the stuff that I've been playing with here. So first thing we're going to do is create a null object. This is basically the master null for the scene. Everything is going to be pivoting around this and using the motion of this null to control the movement. So in fact, I'll just call this motion null. Let's make sure to make it 3D. I'm going to move this over here. So I'll go to my emitter and we'll parent this to the emitter. In fact, let's get rid of the keyframes on this and let's turn off the arrowhead for now because we'll be coming back to that. Let's just drop this down a few. I'll also turn off the dashed lines and I think that's good for now. So I've got my particular lines drawing using my emitter. I'll parent the emitter to that motion null. And I was holding down the shift key just to have it snap to that null. So I know that it's in the same exact X axis. And I'm going to drag this over here. I know this is pretty exciting so far, but trust me, it's even more exciting than this. All right, so our light emitter is parented. Now, the cool thing we can do when we parent things like this is make some really interesting motion paths that we can draw with. I'll actually take this back full on to the 90 degrees mark and just pull this down a little bit. Okay, so now this will get interesting. So I'm going to set a keyframe for Z rotation, and we'll have this go from 0 to 1 second. And we'll have this go all the way around. So we'll sweep this around in a three quarters of a circle. So that goes to negative 180. And then at this point, I'm going to create a position keyframe. And over the course of a second, we'll have this move out of frame. And I'm going to take the y axis and move this straight up. In fact, I might want to move this down a little bit. Oops, I did that in the wrong place. I need to move this right here. There we go. So we end up with a fairly interesting looking motion path. Let's zoom in on this, take a look at a couple things that need to be cleaned up. The path here isn't very smooth because the null is moving very quickly. And if it samples the position to draw the particles uh, on each frame and connects the, the line in between those frames, it's not clean enough sometimes. So what we can do in our emitter section under the position subframe is set this to 10x linear and we'll get a much smoother shape. So keep in mind, this emitter is parented to that null. So I'm going to duplicate this emitter. So we're going to have emitter, in fact, let's name this one emitter one and I duplicated it. Now we have emitter two. I'm going to move this out. Now it's drawing lines because Particular will create lines based on each instance of a light named emitter. So I can keep duplicating these and making iterations of this. So I'll make a total of five emitters. Okay, so I've duplicated these and made five emitters. And what I'll do is actually cheat a little bit and I'm going to color pick the colors that I already picked out here. So it looks fairly consistent from what I designed. I'm just going to make a new viewer and pull this over to another screen that you can't see and go down here to my emitter colors. So I'll tap uh, AA, show my light options. And for emitter one, we'll use kind of a orangish red, emitter two, kind of an orange and kind of another orange and lots of variations on orange. And then just add a little bit of contrast one that is now, overall, I think I could bring all of these in just a little bit to tighten up these circles. And before I get too far here, just to make things look consistent with the design that I made, the camera has a slight rotation of negative 45 degrees to get everything at an angle. 
Now, next, what I'd like to do is introduce a delay for each of these. So these aren't all moving exactly at the same time. I'd like to create a little bit of variation in their movement when, when they start. They could all sort of cascade and trickle out, you know, one at a time, or we could kind of randomize it a little bit. But this is difficult to do because, well, they're parented, and parenting inherently doesn't really have any sort of built-in delay option. It's either parented or it isn't. But I recently learned that there is actually a very cool expression that we can use to introduce a delay to something that is parented. So I'm going to leave emitter number one just the way it is. That's fine. And on emitter two, we're going to delay that one just a little bit. And I'll show you this, but this will obviously be in the notes for this tutorial page. I don't want to go through this whole thing and try to explain it. Essentially, what we're doing is taking the parented value and resampling the value after it's been parented based on its real world position. So where is it actually? Inside from it being parented and uh, moving from other parented layers, where is it in a real world space? And then what we can do is take that and introduce a delay to that parented value. So I'm going to take this and copy this, and I'll put this in my emitter position for emitter 2 three, and four. In fact, I can go in here, right click, I can say copy expression only, and paste this to three, four, and five. Now, these are all delayed the same amount because I pasted the same expression. So let's bring this full screen, hit EE to show our different expressions in here. Now we could do you know, 0 0.2, 0 0.4, 0 0.6, 0.8 to get these cascading, but uh, I like the look of it being varied a little bit. So I'll set maybe this one to 0.6, maybe this one will be point. Uh, two, maybe this one can be 0.3, and this could be 0.4. So now we've got lots of variation in the timing of these, even though they're parented. Essentially, everything is really just moving around this one master null. So we can still do things like select all these and drag them in their x axis closer or further away from that null without worrying about creating additional keyframes or anything like that. I can just sort of move these around and redraw those lines, which I think is really a really cool thing to do. So now, at this point, we're going to attach the arrowheads to this. So I'll just do this quickly. So I'm going to duplicate that one because I'm going to use a, another copy of this later on as a particle to fill in inside here, add some more uh, arrowheads oriented along the path. So even though this is called arrowhead, I'm actually going to rename this arrowhead one, and this will attach to the emitter. Now, because of this parenting expression that we've introduced, it creates a little bit of a complication for us in terms of getting these arrowheads properly oriented and attached to these emitters. Now, uh, this first one actually is no problem at all. I can simply parent arrowhead one to emitter one because emitter one has no expression on it. And then under emitter one, option command O, orient to that along its path, which it actually already is. So I should see arrowhead one moving along with it. Oh, it looks like I didn't reset the position. Let me try this one more time. Pick whip, parent, and hold down the shift key so it snaps to that position. Now it should be moving along. Obviously, it's again, it's kind of big. Uh, let's set this to maybe 30%, actually 35, I think is what I used. And this should be moving in a relative motion, just, uh, well, it has the wrong initial orientation. So let's tap R and take our best guess. Actually, I'll use my rotate tool and go right here. It looks like it's that Z axis that needs to be changed. And this will set it down here in the orientation because I've got set orientation right here instead of rotation. So it looks like that needs to be zeroed out in its Y axis like that. So that's the easy one. The reason we can't depend on parenting for this is because the way that the parenting and velocity work. So let's go in here, let's uh, select emitter 2, and that's going to orient along its path, and I have arrowhead 2 parented to it. And this should all work if it were going to actually work for us, which it's not. But I just want to show you what's going to happen. So let's zero out this and point it down in the Y. There we go. Also scale that to, I think, 35%. So what's going to happen, and see as it moves, is actually not taking on the correct orientation. 
what's happening is it's inheriting the velocity of the parent layer, which is the emitter two, and that is inheriting the velocity of its parent layer, which is that motion null. So even though we have simplified things using this null and parenting and a couple simple expressions, we've complicated things a little bit by, uh, well, for attaching these arrowheads. But there's this fairly simple solution here. So remember I said velocity takes care of that orient along path, right? So we just need to get some sort of a velocity to this arrowhead. So instead of parenting, I'm going to directly connect the position of the arrowhead to the position of the emitter. Now, this is not quite as easy as it seems, but just about. So you might be thinking, okay, well, let's take arrowhead two, create an expression, and pick whip the position of emitter two. And you're almost there. Problem is that emitter two is also parented. So again, this is one of those cases where we need to convert the layer space transformations of this layer to its world position, not its parented position. After Effects expressions only directly connect the values from one parameter to the next. It isn't aware of this parenting. So what we need to do is make it aware of that. So we're going to say use its position in the world space. And we do this by typing to world, make sure to have that capital W. And in parentheses, we define the, um, the anchor point of it, which we can simply define as zero, zero, and zero end parentheses there we go so now this arrowhead is attached to that point i need to go back to the rotation now just to play it safe i'm going to zero all of these out just so we don't have additional angles and orientations that don't belong in here go back here set this z to 270. we should have that fill effect on here as well and if i tap ee we should have that expression in the fill to use the color from, in this case, emitter 2. There we go. So that takes on the color of emitter 2. Okay, so now that we've introduced that velocity, you would think that we would simply be able to go in here and orient it along its path, like I just did, and push this in the right direction and hit play. And it mostly works but mostly isn't good enough. As you, as I play it, you see this thing kind of snaps uh, in different directions as it rounds the bend here. And I honestly don't know if I have, this is just some sort of After Effects bug or whatever, but uh, what we can do is manually do what Orient Along Path is doing via an expression. And I'm going to take whatever layer that I'm looking at, in this case this will be emitter 2, and I can uh, change this to emitter 3 and 4 for each other arrowhead, and basically we take two point samples, one where we look at the position of the emitter uh, in real world space at the current time minus one frame, and the current uh, world position at the current time. So basically we're creating a measurement from the current frame to one frame ago. We'll subtract those, and then this down here basically creates the angle between the, the resulting difference of these two points in time. That's exactly uh, what I've been describing to you all this, all this time, which is orienting along path using the velocity. So I'm going to copy this expression and drop this into Z rotation. This is essentially, I mean, this really should be what orient along path is doing, except this one works and orient along path doesn't. So let me zero these out up here. And what I need to do is just rotate this down in the y axis, uh, well, actually in the x axis, sorry. And now this one works just fine. There's, oh, and make sure to turn off the auto orientation here. So, so now this swoops around and does not flicker or anything like that. It works just fine. So I'm going to quickly do this for the other arrowheads. So Duplicate this, arrowhead 3, arrowhead 4, arrowhead 5, 4, 5, 3, tap EE. So for this one, uh, I'll change that fill effect too. So we'll go to the fill, change that to emitter 5, emitter 5. This will be emitter 4, and emitter 4. There we go. So we should have all of our arrowheads properly aligned just like so. Again, everything is still using that main null, which I think is 
pretty darn awesome. So let's uh, lay in this dash line on top of it. In fact, that actually is pretty much all set and ready to go. Uh, and I'll do one more thing. So just to show you how this works inside trap code particular, uh, we'll have some arrows kind of uh, emit along these these paths as the, the lines draw on and orient inside those paths. So that'll make sense in just a second. So let me go to my dashed line here. In fact, let's get rid of the expression and the keyframes. I'll set this simply to one particle per second. I'll go to my particle section here, change the particle type to a custom particle using sprite. I'm actually going to use sprite fill because that uh, arrow that I'm using has a, an orange tint to it. So if I colorize it, it's going to not be the correct color. So I'm going to fill it with a color and I'll just fill it with white. Uh, make sure to actually define that. So under texture, I'll define the layer for the particle, which is going to be that arrowhead one, that very first one. Uh, it's going to tell me that it's kind of large. That's fine. Uh, I'll just leave it as is. And let's go to the particle size and turn that up to, let's say, 20. Or make it a little bigger so you can see it. In fact, uh, just for demonstration, let's set this to three particles per second so we can see these. Uh, now we can see that they are being emitted along those paths, which are great, uh, but they are not orienting along the direction of the path. So under the particle section, under rotation, there is something called orient to motion. This should sound pretty familiar by now. So we can have these things orient along their motion path. Right now, they're not moving though. So they're just born and then they sit there and they don't go anywhere. So what we need to do is go into the emitter section and add a little bit of motion. Now, what we don't want to do is introduce velocity. This is simply going to have them move in all random directions. What we want to do is inherit velocity from motion. Remember that thing that we zeroed out. I'm going to set this to a very low value, 0.1, so they can barely see them moving. It's just enough so that we can have it look at this minuscule amount of movement and derive the angle that it needs to orient. That's a really, really simple way of doing this. Now, we could do this with uh, math and trigonometry like we did with these other arrowheads. When we don't have to do it, that's really cool and you get away with it. Now, I'm just going to copy and paste this little text that I put in the center. So that's really it. So I hope that gives you some really cool ideas for your own work. There's some really interesting concepts that I covered here and some really exciting things that I've just barely started playing with. And I encourage you to do the same. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. My name's Harry Frank. Thank you so much for watching.